Hello, we're in a school and we're assessing all the pianos. The school's kindly asked us to do that, so um, we're really pleased when we can do that because very often school pianos don't get assessed. This, I'm going to go pretty fast on each one because there's lots of pianos. This piano stool is fine, it's not loose at all. Um, this is a 1994 um, Yamaha S6, it's had 210 centimetres long. Um, they I don't think they're too concerned about the case, though they are thinking possibly of selling some of the pianos, so it's important to take a look at their cosmetics as well. So looking at the case of this, it is, well, it's not been kept incredibly well, so there's quite a lot of casework to do, um, as you can see on the top here. Well, it's very dusty as well as um, got some nicks and bumps. And I don't think there's any veneer missing, which is encouraging. It's on, and it, the casters are still on there. If it's on an old A-frame, that's a nuisance because you've got to buy new casters if you're selling it. Um, but this is on an easy fit frame, and that's fine. They're a bit on the high side because the easy fit does make them a bit on the high side. It's worth folding that back. It's very hard, heavy, the lids on these modern ones. And uh, so, obviously, it's a, it's a nice piano originally. It's been used a lot and consequently it's very dirty on the inside but we haven't found anything particularly amiss about the piano uh, just cosmetic for in terms of resale value really and the pedals are extremely quite high because of the um, easy fit frame so the main work to do on this is to do with the touch because it's been played a lot uh, well and, and also the making good it's going to be sold and that's uh, quite a big job actually but uh, then we've, if we look at the touch because it's been played a lot it's gone right down so that should be well 52 for serious pianists really 37 is very very low indeed um, so that needs sorting out the hammers are a bit worn so the, the they're very they are actually mellow sometimes uh, hammers brighten up a lot on Yamahas these haven't but they do need voicing and refacing I think to get them voiced properly so we can just look this one chip key, which is obviously again cosmetic, that can be dealt with. Uh, so just briefly, we're going to go through these pianos. I'm not going to have time to, to sit and play them all, but just to give an idea of the tone of the piano. So we go from here. And there's a nice solid sound. So the main thing is to touch on this piano, really. Um, it just, it's far too light for serious playing and for study as well. Hello, this is an assessment for restoration or improvement of a Steinway B uh, grand piano made in 1981, 210 centimetres long. It's part of an assessment for all the pianos in this school and they kind of asked us to assess all the pianos. You can see the casework has been damaged here. Um, it would be difficult to repair that perfectly though polyester, our polyester repair team could probably improve that a lot. Um, but obviously repolishing the whole piano is worth doing on a Steinway B. Um, if you can afford it because it's obviously extremely high quality piano nowadays they're uh, very valuable indeed if they're brand new and this is a 1980s one which I really do like the tone of the 80s ones uh, one of them I used to tune the concert hall for well actually it was a Model D but for a long time and uh, really appreciated that piano so we've got knocks on the piano generally unfortunately and the top is very scratched so that, that can certainly be done we, if we just buffed it up without um, doing the whole piano, so, uh, sorry, without repolishing the whole piano, that is possible, but um, it's a candidate for repolishing, obviously. And uh, there's, a, there's a crack here too in the polyester, so it would be w worth doing. Oh, I didn't realise there's going to be lots of music under there, sorry. So that's, uh, I haven't taken that up yet. So that's obviously part of the, the, you know, the, the case what it needs doing. You can see the music stand here, so a very worn felt, which indicates how much playing the piano's had over the years. Uh, key tops are, are dirty and need buffing because if they're, if they're not buffed then they attract the dirt so um, obviously you try and keep them clean at the same time but uh, certainly they uh, will be improved a lot. Buffing would be an obvious thing to do. Now looking at the inside, apart from being quite dusty, um, it's uh, all playing well except for some of the dampers. Now if we look down here you can see there's a damper lifted there. Um, and there's one that's damaged as well. So there are some damaged dampers and then they certainly need regulating. They're also not, not really moving up and down at the same time. So if we press the pedal, and if you can see that very well actually, there's one or two there. Um, so that's not disastrous, but certainly is regulation to do. And at the back there, there's one of the felts that's damaged. So you can see the damaged felt there. Um, so some of these dampers aren't working very well. So this one that's lifted off, and that one that's lifted off, you can hear the high, high harmonics not being cut off. 
Now the general tone of the piano, as it is on 80s Steinways, is superb. Nice and plummy and typical Steinway. And a solid bass too. Now I've taken the key stock rail off just to see um, if it needs lubricating and indeed this, the balance rail here could do with dry lubricant on it. We use talc or Teflon powder um, as we mentioned many times and you can see that they're not falling down, they should be falling down so that's something that needs doing. Though in fact we'll find in a minute that the touch is too light not too heavy. Um, we have got plenty of leads to take out there if we want to make the touch heavier. So there's plenty of lead in all the keys um, and to make the touch heavier you can take out some of the lead or take out the legs completely or just drill out some of the lead and uh, get the touch exactly as you want it. Now I'm pretty sure this hammer's have been replaced at some stage but there's no n n date on the hammers. If, you've got, if it's Renner normally there's a date on the hammers which helps you a lot. It's not, they're not Arbel hammers I don't think. Those are the two main makes you'd expect. There is a number on this one here um, I don't know if that means anyone to anyone, anything to anyone if you're in the trade and can help me with that. But there's nothing written on any of the hammers, unfortunately. No, no name Renner or Arbel or, um, and no, no date on them. So, uh, but I think they have been replaced. Um, there's not incredibly worn for the age of the piano, for the amount it looks as though it's been played. So I'm pretty certain that's the case. But they're actually extremely light. Um, and also the hinges here, I took one of them off and they swing in, uh, infinitely almost. They should swing less than seven times or seven times when you swing them. I'm not going to take one off to show you now, but they're very, very loose and you see they fall straight back down. So those hinges are too loose. Um, so our technical department will decide what to do with those. Um, and uh, if perhaps the weight of the keys can be uh, improved, or they can be, can be made heavier by, t by replacing hammers, it might be necessary. Um, so that's a decision for them to make. Hopefully it's not, because actually that's a very expensive job. Um, but um, I have to consult with them. I don't do the work on the hammers normally, so uh, they're the ones who are doing it all the time and uh, getting, gaining experience all the time working with Renner and Steinway and uh, trying to improve everything we do, obviously in the team. Now generally the tone is good, they do need voicing, fine voicing, whether they need refacing first, um, that's a decision to make. The, the general tone is good, so refacing might not be necessary, but we probably will do some of that just to bring back a bit of brightness and then we can mellow down as necessary. So there's a summary of things that we need to do, there's quite a few things I didn't mention there, but they're on the sheet so that we don't forget them obviously. Um, and. Uh, the main thing is the touch weight, it's extremely low, so 38 is around about 30% lower than it should be. So to get good control, and if you're practicing, seriously practicing, then that's far too light. Obviously if the piano gets played more and more, it does get lighter and lighter. Though I think some of it is related to the hammers and the shanks, and our team will sort of look into that and investigate and see what they feel. Obviously we don't want to spend money unnecessarily. I think the hammers could probably be kept, but uh, we'll have to decide on that with the team who's doing it all the time. So that's an important. That's the most important decision to make. I've mentioned all the other things. I think uh, generally, and uh, the so touch weighting is the main thing. Uh, there's slight variety in the key dip and things like that. So obviously we're going to do all that and find regulate and get it to be a concert piano because it's in a recital room and needs to be as good as possible. Nice, nice to see a lot of legroom by the way, 62, that's more than normal and it's not sitting on an A-frame or anything and the height of the pedals is very low so that's encouraging because there's lots of tall people around these days and need, and grands don't always have, have a huge amount of legroom. So that's an assessment of a Steinway Model B Grand Piano, uh, made in 1981, um, and one of the best pianos made really, of modern pianos that is. Now the touch is the main issue here, it's been played a lot, I, I think the hammers have been replaced and I have to 
I'll consult with the team and put the answer underneath as to what they think. Or if you're a technician and um, f very familiar with working on Steinwish, I would love to know. There's no name Renner on it or date or anything on the hammers, so... But it's just a beautiful piano, but the touch is far too light, so if, you're pra if you want to give me a concert of your practicing on it, and the middle C, for instance, I think it's about 38 grams and should be 52, uh, really. It's certainly 47 minimum, uh, 54 maximum, 55. So that will be acceptable, but not 38. It's far too light. So we can take weights out of the front of the keys. There's plenty of weight there to take out. Or we can replace hammers. Um, that obviously... That does get done a lot on Steinways because Steinways are you know, trying to maintain them as concert pianos. See the tenor area and the bass are superb, so it would, it's an excellent recital piano. Various issues I've written on the spreadsheet, so sorry, on the assessment sheet. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, this is a Steinmeier upright piano made in, I think, 2005. And it's part of an assessment of school pianos. Um, and it's quite in tune at the moment, and there's some positive things to say about the piano. The tone varies, though, a bit here and there. And the tenor area here is a bit boomy. Looking here, that's convenient that it's got the date there, 2005, so I presume that's when it was made. Um, and there's a bit of variety of tone, so... Down that area, there's a bit boomy and, and a bit varied, but, but it plays reasonably well. Now, my colleague's actually assessed this piano, and uh, he said the sustain pedal was disconnected and connected it again. Um, and uh, these are slight pitch raising, hammers need alignment. Uh, it generally plays, plays quite well though. So there's not really a lot of recommended work to do on this piano. Uh, staying in tune pretty well and uh, pretty consistent throughout. Just slightly flat but generally pleasant to play and the touch is a little bit on the heavy side. Uh, we can make that slightly lighter but it, it's uh, really quite playable as it is. This is an assessment of a reed sum piano. It's part of assessing school pianos. Um, and we're a bit flummoxed by this one. It says made in Germany here. And certainly the inside quality and the way it's constructed looks like a German piano. But reed sum is normally associated with the Korean firm. And uh, if we look in the inside here, we can see uh, it certainly looks German to me. It's got individual agraphs, for instance. And if you listen to the tone of it, very pleasant piano. And the way the Celeste pulls out, it's very much like a Fourick, modern modern Fourick, and uh, I think it's West German, but if you are aware of uh, Reed Sun being made in West Germany at any stage, as well as being made in Korea, then it would be really helpful to know. It's a very fine piano. One of the things we also noted here is tremendous leg room, 68. That means uh, there's my legs normally almost sitting against the keyboard here. So for tall people, this is ideal. And the pedals aren't particularly high, they're six centimeters. So really an excellent instrument altogether. This is an assessment of a Reed Sun piano, part of a school assessment set of all their pianos and uh, it's been played quite a bit and is a reasonable sort of mid-quality mid piano. Reed Sun's a Korean firm though we, we had another one that seems to be made in Germany but I think this one uh, it's difficult to say. They have got individual agraphs here which is good news. Um, I'm not quite sure if Reed Sun will usually have those. It's quite a reasonable piano. It's not very bright through being played a lot and the, 
the, the um, keys here, you can see they're quite loose, so they could do with, with regulating, and they're getting a bit on the worn side. And the felt here also is very, very worn. It has got some hinge pins working loose too, uh, though the hinge is holding on all right. So there's no major work to do on this pin, it's very slightly flat, um, and the hinge pins are cricket bats, and possibly replacing this felt here. Uh, but otherwise it's quite a reasonable counter. You can see the touch is a little bit on the heavy side in places and a little bit uneven too. That does happen to pianos as they as they're used, so that needs we would rectify that if it was a stock piano. <laughs> reasonably in tune, just slightly flat. This is assessment of a Young Chang piano and it's a part of a school assessment made in 1990 to 1995 according to our book. Um, a bit dirty but generally speaking the, the piano seems to be in quite a good condition. It's playing reasonably well. Young Chang's a Korean firm, so 131. I think I remember selling some new ones uh, a little bit before that when I was down in Portsmouth and uh, so it's a reasonable piano not a huge amount of hammer wear I don't think just been pl played reasonably quite well in tune so it's it's a reasonably well made piano sort of we might say sort of mid-range upright piano and uh, plenty of leg room so not a huge leg room but uh, the, there was a reed sun which we assessed just a minute ago and that had huge leg room but reasonable amount <laughs> keys start to get a bit loose after it's been played a lot so that's one thing that could definitely be done is taking up the slack on the cricket bats. So generally reasonable piano and the little bit of regulation to do especially the cricket bats. The cricket bat is the adjustment uh, of this front rail here so the, the felt needs to, the, it's the cricket bat shape, sorry I can't show you on this one but um, on other videos we've got showing you the cricket bat shape and you just turn it slightly sideways and take up the slack on the keys. Now, there are other adjustments, minor ones to do as well but the general tone it's a reasonable instrument could do with voicing here and there, that's a very bright one assessment of a Forek upright piano, Julius Forek, so it's the original West German Julius Forek piano, um, so that, as distinguished from the f modern Forek piano, so it's a different piano really, um, and it's typical West German construction, so high quality construction generally. You can see if you look up, lift up the lid here, which is very heavy, um, I, I'm not sure when it was made, so I'm guessing probably 1990s or possibly 80s, um, and uh, it's uh, High quality construction, we've got the agraphs right, uh, on that section there, which is a sign of a good piano maker normally, if they put agraphs there, and that's that's a, a good sign. So um, West German pianos particularly do that. So we're looking at the whole piano and the agraphs down there as well. Let's listen to the tone of the individual strings. And that's it's very beautiful. down to the bass so it's a well-made piano. So as a piano in a school practice room this is an excellent piano. It has got the music desk felt missing which obviously doesn't really matter. It's more cosmetic than anything else and there's uh, but uh, very little to say that he's doing. It's a bit flat um, and uh, the key weighting isn't it's pretty good really. That's pretty even. Uh, what you want it to be. It's unusual that we find it so good, so 50 grams, 52 grams throughout, that's just, just fine. Um, so, very good instrument. Let's have another listen to the tone of the piano.
This is an assessment of a Yamaha U3AS, made in 1986 apparently, and it's an assessment of uh, other school pianos we're doing at the moment. And the casework is a bit on the dirty side, but obviously the main thing is is in the practice room, and we want to see if there's any work that might improve the piano. So looking at the inside, it's uh, there's the, the number of the piano, so that's dating it 1985 apparently. And... Uh, I prefer the slightly older ones really, 19, up to about 1980. The AS series, personally, I don't like quite so much. It's, it's the tone rounds here, it seems a bit, a bit on the th thinner, but they're extremely well constructed and the touch is excellent on them. So it's a good instrument, generally. And my colleague who assessed this has written that the key weighting is excellent, which is absolutely true. So um, that's pretty much as we would want it to be. So nothing to do on that, which is unusual. Um, between sort of 50 and, well, 52 and 48 in the top. So it's slightly varied from that, but um, pretty good for practicing on and studying on. So it's a good practice from piano and be very stable as well. I just discovered one note that's particularly out of tune if you listen. See if you can, that's out of tune if it actually as well. Uh, that one particularly, the right hand string. Not sure why that is, but uh, uh, we'll tune that for them while we're doing the assessment. This is an assessment of a Yamaha U3AS, made in 1987. Uh, it's a very similar piano we've just looked at. This is part of the assessment of school pianos. So generally the school pianos are uh, very high standard pianos. This is a, certainly a good practice instrument. Um, it's been played quite a bit and the, the tone of the hammers is quite varied actually. So uh, some of them are quite mellow, like there. And you get some quite bright ones generally very mellow because it's been used quite a bit and sometimes hammers on the Yamahas go brighter funnily enough. In this case they've gone mellower um, so could be refaced but in fact it's not really a problem it's just mellower than you expect. It's a bit boomy round there. I've mentioned before and my favourite Yamahas are up to about 1981, um, 1985, the U3AS series. I prefer the U3H, U3G and and the M and the A. I think if you're in the trade, you might like to verify that. Uh, not quite so fond of the tone generally around here. It just doesn't sound as, sounds a bit thinner than the other ones. And that's very mellow, that one. So that should, could do with voicing, really. It's, it's far too mellow around there. But uh, as a practice piano, is, is a good instrument. It's got a reasonably good tenor and bass. Slightly boomy there. thin there so the bass strings on Yamaha's can vary a bit. So one of the things I've written here is music stand sloping. They do tend to go like this. The hinges for some reason or another uh, don't seem to have be man enough for the for holding them uh, like the older Yamaha's. So really we can put something underneath the back of this to, to raise it up a bit because it's too much of a slope really. Though it is working as you can see from uh, this clipboard that's on it here. Um, touch uh, is excellent actually so good touch front rails could do with a little regulation and general regulation throughout but generally an excellent instrument let's just have a quick look listen to the tone so it does doesn't really sing as I say the older Yamahas but if you're in the trade you might like to comment on this please do it's not just me perhaps who it might just be me that doesn't like the U3AS so much. And definitely has mellowed a lot in that area there. And generally throughout is varying in tone. 